Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Co. And we have another long video today. I got my, my dye, a little blue and purple one I'll be playing with today. I, I got my water. We are all prepped to go there. Uh, next week will likely be a little lighter. It looks like the election is scaring off, well, everyone who wants to launch a Kickstarter. So it looks like the next two weeks after this will start getting a little lighter. We all have time to, to, to relax, to breathe. Not that I really breathe. I just keep talking. But relax, to breathe, to potentially save up a little bit more money before the next wave of giant Kickstarters and all that. Now, a few things today. Got a whole bunch of updates. Uh, one cancellation, a bunch of new Kickstarters, just a bunch of stuff to talk about. Before we get into that, I have two small things I want to mention. First of all, if you watch most of my videos, or more, more specifically, if you watch my reviews, this past week I tried adjusting my review format a bit, a little bit less focus on a run-through and a rules overview, and more focusing on the feeling and general impressions. If you watched both styles of my reviews, I do appreciate feedback in terms of what you prefer, what you like better. I'm always... I'm always gauging the type of videos I do and what works for me, but also what works for, for you. So in general, whenever you see me do something differently, uh, if you think it's worse, let me know so I can take it into account and possibly adjust. And if it's better, well, then even more so, like, let me know that you did like the difference or not. It's less about, um, I, it's less about the idea that I need you to say you like the video and more that specifically when there's a change, I just appreciate knowing if that's a good change or a bad change or all of that. Uh, separately from there, we have just a small little thing. This is actually a few weeks ago. I just kept forgetting to mention it every week. Uh, Jeff Saris over here, I'll include a link below. He does small interviews with basically uh, startups, entrepreneurs, whatnot. And he did an interview with myself about more the board game co side of things, less the YouTube side of things, more the, the retail operation of board games. So if you want to check out that, by all means, check out that. I'll include a link down below. He also has an interview with Jamie Stegmeyer as well. So that's because he, Jeff Saris, is a board gamer. So naturally, some of his interviews have been focused on people who are in the board game space. But I've watched a bunch of his others as well. In general, they are fairly interesting, so I'll include a link to that to subscribe or watch or whatever. Which brings us to our first board game, which is Nexus, the board game, which is unfortunately got canceled. They do have a relaunch plan. They were a little bit, you know, unsure about the exact next steps. They might be partnering with, you know, some sort of distribution partner, adjusting the way the campaign's handled. But they will be back because I know there are a lot of people who are excited about this game and a lot of people who didn't seem to know much about it. I mean, this is one of those that had a very passionate small audience but very passionate small audience. And so unfortunately they're canceled for now. They will hopefully be back. Uh, from there, I'm going to go into the usual small stuff, the stuff that aren't really uh, funding yet. So a bunch of campaigns that aren't funding. And then I'm not going to really cover the value proposition on those because I usually wait until they were actually funding before I heavily deep dive into them. As far as the Shadow Network, the Shadow Network is actually going up first. Uh, this one is struggling to hit its goal. It might make it, it might not. This is by the same company, Talent Strike Studios. They have done uh, vinyl, so they've done a few other games. If you look at their created over here, so they do have a bunch of other games under their belt. Uh, Shadow Network is actually the first one that I've played from them. I will have a review going up Saturday. So they have vinyl, they have Public Market, uh, Winterborn, Camp Pine Top, a bunch of other games. I haven't played any of theirs until now. Uh, Shadow Network is a game that I have played. I won't heavily go into it because I want to get another player or two under my belt before doing the review, which is why it hasn't been up yet, but it will be going up next Saturday. As of right now, I will say that I think there's a solid engine going on here. I really enjoy aspects of it. I would say overall, I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot that this is a game that um, I would most compare it to Pipeline. It's a very different style of game. Pipeline is a game that I also have a review coming at some point, but the short version is there are a lot of, of engines. This is a manipulation game, which you're going to be turning this into that. So effectively, it has a spy theme on top of it. And then you're going to be collection, collecting intel and influence throughout the game. But the intel specifically, you're going to be manipulating into different styles of other intel to be able to basically, you're going to have intel leaking. You're going to be collecting intel. You're going to have handlers that convert one intel to another. You're going to be turning those intel into full briefcases of intelligence and earning influence along the way. It's a lot of doing this to turn this into that. I have a full review coming. Lots of things I like about it. I'm not yet sure if it's a game I would personally keep in my collection. More so the theme than anything else. But overall, lots to like. I'll have a full, full review coming on that on Saturday. A pass it as far as the campaign. Check it out. I mean, this game is its a solid game. Like, completely, I mean this genuinely. It is a completely solid game. If you are pulled in by the theme, if you like resource conversion engines, if you like worker placement, this is a very tight, streamlined game that allows you to do a lot in four rounds. It will not feel like it. When you hear the rules, you'll be like, there's no way we can do everything. But you'll start cascading the benefits and turning one thing into another really solid engine building with worker placement with a spy theme on it 
Next up from there, we have Annapurna. Leave no Annapurna. Leave no choice behind. This is a small card, uh, card-based mountain climbing game. I don't know much about it. It's you know, it's not funding yet. It's currently. It looks actually this one looks like it will fund. Four thousand twenty-one out of forty-one thirty, which means by the time you watch this, it may well have funded. Uh, Nineteen days to go. I'll look into it more as it funds. But it looks like a small, light card climbing game with an elements of Scrooge in it involved. From there, we have Herby Dragons into the unknown. So, here be Dragons, my main recommendation here is watch the video. I think they did an excellent job with this video. We're at 5,700 out of 14,000 so far, 16 days to go. May well make it, may struggle, we'll have to see there. But I really recommend watching the video. I think within a minute of watching the video, which is only like two minutes, but within a minute of watching the video, I think you will get a good feel whether you are interested in this game or not. For myself, I am interested in the game, not pulled in by the art, and I will be keeping an eye on the campaign to decide for myself whether I want to back it or not. But overall, looks it looks very easy, appealing, accessible. It has elements of tile laying and exploration, elements of fighting monsters, elements of, of quests, you know, find an island, surround, find a plot of land surrounded by all water. So they have quest, fighting, adventure, but all wrapped up to a very simple streamlined tile building game. So it looks very intriguing. My biggest pet peeve is the art doesn't pull me in, but I like what they're doing here enough that I'll be paying attention throughout the campaign. So take a look at the video. I really recommend watching the first minute. You'll get a good feel whether you're interested or not. From there, we have Treasure Hogs Oink to become the ultimate treasure hog. Uh, this is one is is really struggling here. $2,000, uh, 18 days to go. It's not looking great. Hopefully, all fun. We'll see how it plays out. This is going to be one of those, you know, I actually don't know much about the game. I shouldn't say one of those. It's a card-based game in which you're going to be uh, hunting treasure, but there's a competitive element and just enough screwage to keep you on your toes. They have over here, Treasure Hog, simple, fun game with just enough take that to keep everyone on their toes as they go for the big the big cause adventure. I didn't overly look into it. The theme does not appeal to me. The art does not appeal to me, but just mentioning it here in case you are interested, go ahead and check it out. This has 18 days to go. It's currently struggling, so it could use your support. From there, we have Velocity Vanguard. Velocity Vanguard is also really struggling. They have an $84,000 goal, which is ambitious. I mean, don't be wrong, very possibly realistic. That's the nature of the beast. But at the same time, it is ambitious and it does not look like it's going to hit it with 94 backers and 23 days to go. Uh, this one does actually look interesting, but I don't yet know enough about it to know whether I'm interested. I mean, I'm not, I, at the current funding rate, I'm not doing a deep dive into it for myself, but I will say the art style actually does appeal to me. Uh, the hex systems I'm not a huge fan of in general, just like I meaning tons of small hexes. It just seems like something that could be too much to manage, but the actual art going on behind it, I like. If you pay attention to actually some of the stuff over here, if you scroll into the actual gameplay or whatnot, I mean, the ships look great. The, the building up your ship or your unique benefits or different stuff going on looks great. And again, anything I say here, this is quick overview stuff. I did not do a deep dive into it. So if I miss anything up, maybe they're not unique. I don't know. Each faction might be totally the same. They have this interesting movement system in terms of how you put your stuff over here, which affects your movement on the grid. Overall, it looks solidly put together. They have a, a tutorial and playthrough from, from Gaming Rules from uh, Paul Grogan. But that might be one of their problems, which is that's the only thing they have. They have like nothing else from any other content creators, which is... For a, for a game that has a funding goal of $84,000, that is you usually want to get more people in the mix. Uh, even if people don't watch the videos, just having four or five different you know content creators on your page often builds up a certain amount of of confidence. Which, by the way, not necessarily not necessarily that it should be any confidence, especially if they're just previews. Because if it's just a preview, it just means you paid someone to talk about your game. It doesn't actually mean anything. That being said, it still does build up a little bit of confidence that you're at least you're integrated with the gaming ecosystem. You know what's going on. You know what what's going on at typical Kickstarter what people are looking for and also you're giving people information about the game even if, it's not, even if it's not an opinion even if it's just a preview you're still giving people more information about the game structured from someone who produces content so i think they went a little light on the content creation in respect to their eighty-four thousand dollar goal and that might be one of the things that's hurting them there's just no buzz about the game i mean the only reason i know about it is because well i i have to for the sake of these videos or i try to for the sake of these videos but yeah it actually does look pretty interesting i i would love to know more about it it's just you know very far down from where it needs to be from there we have that's a you problem. That's a you problem is a light fist is also and it's having a hard time funding eleven hundred dollars out of sixty six thousand. And that I, I don't don't know really who know who the target audience is for this one. This is one that is a it's a more of a it's about making an impact about being environmentally conscious and be, basically building up a better ecosystem through the use of a light card game with small elements of take that uh, small elements of building out your tableau. It's going to be a very light game. It does not look like anything you know gamer centric. Just a light fun game. Good art. You know very en environmentally conscious. I don't know if that's a pro or a con. It could be that. It could be there's going to be a lot of people who are pulled in by the idea of a game that sells environmentally friendly. But it could equally be that there's going to be a bunch of people who are just like, I just don't need politics invading every sphere of my life. And I know, I know 
people are going to say it's not politics in the environment. That's fine. It still ends up with a political spin on things. I don't know if that helps or hurts the game, but either way, kudos to getting the message out there. Kudos to trying something like this. Hopefully it actually funds. We'll see how that plays out. But a light, you know, card game all about the being environmentally conscious by calling it that's a you problem. Next up, we have our updates. So these are updates on existing campaigns, campaigns I've talked about already in the weekly roundup and whatnot, and just giving you small little details or whatnot of what's going on. Uh, generally, something I know I, I, you guys know this already, or most of you know this already, but if it's, a, if it's a Kickstarter campaign that I've done a full video on it, that doesn't go into the update section, that still gets its own dedicated section in the weekly roundup. So, Project Elf Finesse. Uh, this one I just want to touch upon one thing, which is there's no real major updates here, but I really recommend checking out these, uh, these updates over here. They have Inside the Puzzle, they have behind the shapes. They have a host of amazing updates throughout the campaign that really dive into what it takes to make a game, really dive into what it's involved in that process of building out a game. They have interviews, they have images, they go through a lot of different, like, you know, the math behind the game. Like, how do you math out a game that is well balanced? They have a lot of amazing, fascinating updates that really, like, I actually just saw a comment today about someone mentioning that they want to see more of a deep dive into what goes into designing a game. And this gives you a very good insight into that. I mean, obviously, it's specific to Project L, but I thought these were fascinating to read. So if you're interested in those, I mean, Project L in general is killing it with 350,000 and 6,500 backers. I mean, everyone I know has really enjoyed this game. It's not a surprise to me. I'm just mentioning in addition to all of that, they have these fascinating series of updates that really talk about what goes into the process. I thought they were incredibly well done. And well, that's basically Project L. From there, we have Twisted Fables. Four days to go, three days by the time you're watching this. Twisted Fables is one that I just did a review on it on Saturday. So if you want to check out my channel, I have a review for Twisted Fables. Overall, I really like the game. I have, I guess, minor concerns about long-term replayability for each character. I did get a comment today, actually, from someone saying that they talked to the designer and there are multiple expansions planned. I don't know what types of expansions, but either way, I'm intrigued. Uh, I did like the system enough that despite myself being someone who generally does not like competitive head-to-head -head games, I will say that my wife and I have played multiple games for the sake of giving a review, and my wife keeps asking to play again, and I keep wanting to play it again. It really is surprisingly addicting. Again, my one thing in the review, my one critique was, well, my main critique, um, most of them were pedantic stuff, but like the size of the text, but my one main critique was the idea that I was concerned about the long-term replayability. That remains true, but for right now, I am really enjoying it and want to hop back in. Uh, past that, my main thing, I mentioned this last week, so it's more of an update, nothing crazy going on there. But basically, they just have a ton of characters. So they have a ton of characters. I recommend, if you are thinking about back in this game, I do not recommend the standee pledge or whatnot. Just wait for retail if you're doing that. I do recommend the deluxe pledge where you get a bigger discount compared to MSRP or whatnot, although it's miniatures and stuff that won't be typically sold. So MSRP is kind of fake at that point, but it will give you basically everything. It'll give you the 2v2. It'll give you the neoprene flame mat. It'll give you all the upgraded, I don't know if the war upgraded tokens or not, but if there are, it gives you those. It gives you all the expansions and everything else all together. So I highly recommend if you are intrigued by this game, get that deluxe giant box. It's going to come with a bunch of miniatures, which will only add to your enjoyment of the game. I mean, these miniatures are great. We have Mulan, we have Little Mermaid, we have Sherzad, we have Match Girl. Uh, the art in this game is off the wall. I really think the art here is insane. Uh, you know, a little bit adult themed in terms of some of the stuff is borders towards risque, but I don't, I mean, that's a, that's a you decision. You decide to what element you care about that. Uh, for myself, wasn't a problem. My wife wasn't a problem, but in, I wouldn't necessarily say it's kid friendly, but that is a decision you can make for yourself and your family. From there, we go to Veiled Fate. Veiled Fate is another one that I have an update on, which basically, there's a few updates here. The first is I did a full interview with uh, with Austin from IV Studios, and apparently it is IV Studios, or technically it's IV Games, which is a subset of IV Studios, or a sub something of IV Studios. But I did an interview with Austin from IV Studios, to say that again, IV Games. I can just keep saying IV, just let that sink in for a second, IV. Anyways, did an interview with Austin, and uh, so we basically talked about uh, how they went from being a you know, a, a film and animation company, a creative company to designing board games. We talked about his personal favorite board games. We talked about Moonraker's Veiled Fate. And more, most importantly, we talked about the new pledge level because one of the things they've done here is they've added a new pledge level for $49 Veiled Fate Lite. And they talk about it here. I'm going to go through their updates. I think that's the best way to do it, which basically, if I can find it, we're adding a new backer tier. So basically, they, they've paid attention to the fact that despite doing incredibly well, despite being at $530,000, six days to go, this will likely cross $700,000. Possibly, I can see it going above that as well. Uh, if I have to make an accurate guess on camera, because they're actually, they're running a game on this. You can look at my uh, interview video for more information, but they're running a game if you guess the right amount. My official on-camera guess, as of now, is 700 and. 
$713,000. That's my official on-camera guess, okay? So we'll see how close it gets to that. $713,000, let's be more specific, $713,827, okay? There we go. That's a very specific guess. Uh, if you guys can make that happen, that'd be great. But in any case, aside from that uh, guessing of where we're going to end up, they basically added a light tier to their... They talked about the fact that they didn't do a good job selling what makes their games so deluxe, what goes into the production of their games. And as a company that is all about visuals, as a company that does, you know, film or animation or whatever, they are specifically very focused on the final... I guess, production quality of a game. And so they have always, and they're always as relative term, it's Moonrakers and Veiled Fate, but in their games, they have focused on going above the industry norm to higher than industry norm in terms of the card quality, in terms of the board quality, in terms of everything that they do in their games. And so they introduced Veiled Fate Lite, which is a lighter version of their game. It still is. If you compare it to industry norms, it's still above industry norms, but not as premium of, as, their, uh, as their other pledge levels. Basically, the goal being that to make it more accessible to other people to jump into the game. And I talked about this in an interview. You can watch that. But basically, the math works out that unless they're expecting a ton of people to suddenly back this game, this literally can only be sold as a move that is about getting more people in the door which obviously there's a long-term benefit marketing wise once you're following them once you like their game so there is i'm not selling it as purely self centered purely selfless but if you do the math on this they would have had to have like a lot of people 500 or 1,000 people backing this pledge level for the math to work out in their favor compared to what they did again i talk about it in the interview you can check it out there but it really does seem to be a genuine move about opening the doors for other people to jump on the train from there we have studies in sorcery Studies in Sorcery, this is our first official new Kickstarter, so now up to the new Kickstarter section. We still have a lot to go over here, but Studies in Sorcery is going to be a game where it's about to, where is it? This one is, this is an engine building drafting game for one to four players. This is by Weird Giraffe Games. They have a bunch of other games under their belt, and they have Studies in Sorcery as well as they have an expansion. So they have a $19 pledge for Studies in Sorcery with stretch goals. They have a $29 pledge for Studies in Sorceries and Divination. And this one is going to be, it, it's a light little car, uh, engine building drafting game where you're going to be collecting cards cards will have on their side like elements of what they what's required to build them you're going to be utilizing different cards you're going to go hunting in the graveyard to get more cards i mean i know a cursory overview of the game i don't know a deep dive of this one as far as the actual should you back it or should you not doesn't make sense or whatnot uh, basically their past games historically have made their way into retail and been cheaper over time we're not talking about huge amounts but they definitely have been cheaper at the same time they have in their why back now section if i can find it here they basically talk about the why back now and they say that there's here we go there's no guarantee that this will make its way into retail. So just because of the fact that some of their past games have made their way into retail does not mean this will. Uh, I don't know how you want to take that one. Whenever a company basically says, we just don't know how it will play out, I'm always wary because, I mean, practically speaking, they're probably going to try. That being said, there's two ways to look at this. If you're trying to get this game, then comparing the retail prices to what you pay now, you're basically talking about roughly shipping. So you're basically talking about paying like six bucks more to get the game now as opposed to retail. As far as holding its value, if you want to sell it, it's going to be hard for you to get your money back on this one if you want to sell it just because it's a small enough price point that shipping's going to kill you shipping's going to kill you meaning you're going to have to factor that into your price and you're unlikely to get your money back so not the worst waste of money in terms of getting it net waste is the wrong word because you're also getting it earlier you are supporting the creators i, I don't want to use the word waste it's not the the worst extra six dollars you'll ever spend if you want the game for yourself but you are unlikely to see your money back as far as selling it on the secondary market later from there we go to knock down the board game. So knock down the board game. This is an interesting one offhand, if only because we're already going to have to compare it to Twisted Fables. Uh, if I can find Twisted Fables, it was somewhere in my tabs here. There we go, Twisted Fables. So knock down the board game is going to be compared to Twisted Fables in the sense that both of them are two-player head-to-head games with a skirmish line. If I can find a picture here, they're going to have a skirmish line. Here we go. So a skirmish line back and forth, two characters until eventually one person wins. Uh, in knock down, it's going to be much more focused. And I've played Twisted Fables. I have not played knock down, but Twisted Fables, I liked it a lot, like I said, deck building along with that two-player head-to-head. Knockdown is going to be less of a deck builder and more of a lighter, fun skirmish game. Each character, each of these boxes is going to have, you know, three characters, and then you're going to be, oh, what's it called? You're going to be attacking each other with using dice, abilities, and you're going to have this knockdown mechanic, which looks fascinating, which is the idea that as you do damage to people, you can basically trigger a knockdown where they have to stack their damage cubes, counting to ten, and stack them all, which means the more damage they take, the harder it's going to get progressively, progressively. They do have a non dex 
dexterity variant for those who don't want that dexterity element. Uh, ultimately, this game looks fun. Uh, the feedback I've seen from people who have played it is available on Tabletop. I can't remember if it's Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator, but it is available to play online. And the feedback I've seen from people is generally positive in terms of that it's a fun, light game. It's not going to, you know, be the next... I don't have a good example. It's not going to be the next heavy, heavy strategy game in your collection, but it does look like a fun, light game. And obviously, it has Awakened Realms miniatures, which is a huge pro, pro or whatever. As far as what you get for this game, should you back it, why back now, all that stuff. Uh, so they basically have one primary pledge level unless you're going for a group pledge, and that's going to be 25 euros or roughly $30 to get the game. Now the good news is they're giving you a full other expansion if you back on Kickstarter. So you're not getting the Knockdown game, but you're also getting the Nemesis version of Knockdown. And this is going to, they're going to heavily in integrate this game system with other characters from their universe. So they're going to take the Awakened Realms universe, and if you wanted to play, I don't know which ones offhand, but you want to play Etherfield's characters against uh, uh, Nemesis characters, you can potentially do that. So they are taking worlds you potentially love or might grow to love or might get sucked into through the knockdown system and they're putting that into a little light back and forth game. Uh, it does look interesting. I want it for my own collection, but let's talk about price points and all that. So the price point of roughly $30 plus $14 shipping for US is going to take you to about $44. And the funny part about that number is at $29 on this box, they didn't specify the MSRP. My assumption is $29 is the MSRP, which means practically speaking, when you go to your friendly online game store or whatever it is to buy after the fact, you're probably looking at a price range of around $22 or $23, or roughly $44 to $46. Or in other words, it seems, and this is, again, some guesswork here, there's no firm numbers, but my guess is you're basically getting a roughly ideal pledge not ideal you're getting a roughly okay pledge the same price you'd have to pay for these things in retail but you get them sooner and potentially the extras and that's the potentially part because pay attention because unfortunately when i'm finishing filming this now they said there's going to be an update tomorrow with a large update more characters more stuff i don't know if they're optional buys or not uh, i would say based on what i read in the campaign it seems like more updates would be optional buys i would say the main thing for this game is if you got in for the early bird because if you got in for the early bird then you got that penguin promo over here for free so if you're getting the, peng the Penguin promo as an early bird add-on, then I think this is an easy back, especially if you're interested, because you're basically getting that extra add-on, and you're getting it now, and it's Kickstarter exclusive. So if you're getting the Chili pe Business Penguin, I think it's your best bet. Even if you are just backing this now and buying the Chili Business Penguin, I think that's a better option than waiting for retail because you get a Kickstarter exclusive character out of it. Uh, but past that, it seems like it's an okay back. Not amazing, not bad. I would say you're probably going to see roughly your money back, but you might lose a few bucks, especially if you're trying to charge the same much as somebody's going to charge for, well, as Miniature Market might charge for new. So in terms of your options, decent back. In terms of reselling it, it if you have this character, then a great back. If not, not so great. And that's overall Awaken Realms Knockdown. I don't think, sadly, the problem is with only six days left, I will not be able to cover this before we get to next week, so I won't be able to cover it again for whatever update they release tomorrow. So use your judgment, and if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below, and I will try to get them. Uh, as of right now, by the way, I currently am backing this, and as of now, I am planning on keeping my pledge. Fox Matters. Fox Matters. Bye. Who is by? We have Fox Matters. I saw a name here. I can't scroll to this here. Fox Matters by Gindy. That's right, Gindy. Okay, this is by Enchanters. I remember I knew this one. So this is by the same company that made Enchanters. They're bringing Fox Matters, which I believe is a already existing intellectual property with cartoons and art and whatnot. But overall, they're taking this to a game, and this is going to be a cooperative real-time board game where you're chaining up different foxes to fight off nightmares. The art is adorable. The gameplay looks great. There are two different pledge levels. Well, great. The gameplay looks endearing. Great is a different word. Uh, the pledge levels over here, we currently have a $33 Knight's Pledge and then a $44 King's Pledge, which gives you basically these extra miniatures as well. So you're basically paying roughly an extra $10 to get these adorable little fox miniatures, which is adorable. Um, the plus shipping for both of these. Overall, this is one where I doubt you'll be able to get your money back if you try to sell it down the road. I couldn't find anything about the retail availability of this game. You know, I couldn't find whether this is going to be a game that's commonly available in retail or not, or they're going to have to try to hunt down a copy. So I can't really give that much information as far as whether this is the best back for you or whether it'll be cheaper at retail, but it does seem that this will be, sorry, but it, but it does, I am skeptical that you'll be able to get that money back if you are selling it yourself, just because of the cost to components on what you're getting, as well as the lack of a huge amount of support for this game, meaning it's not it's not doing poorly, don't get me wrong, but 539 backers is also not a, a ton of support. So I don't think there's an overwhelming demand for this, but if you're interested in it, check it out. Uh, support Gindy or whatnot. Gindy's a great company. I like them a lot. But in terms of the value aspect, I don't have any, I don't have a lot of confidence in the value here. I don't have a firm picture because I don't know what that retail availability looks like, 
but not a lot of confidence either. From there, we have Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is one that I did a full video on. So I did a full video on Darkest Dungeon earlier this week. The long and short of it, and I'll go into a bit more, but the long and short of it is Darkest Dungeon is by Mythic Games, and this is going to heavily fall into their category of games that I am skeptical. Let's take one step at the back. Mythic, this game is going to hold its value. This is by Mythic Games. It has a ton of miniatures. The sheer amount of miniatures you get is worth it on its own, just in terms of how much you get out of the, out of there. So in terms of holding its value, that's an easy decision. It will hold this value. Back this game now. If you're unsure, you can sell it down the road. In terms of the game itself, I said for myself it's a pass. It looks like it's a little too fiddly and a little too true to the video game in the sense that you have to deal with maintenance and lots of dice rolling and some elements of luck, things I just don't want in my style of board game. I, for myself, am passing on this one despite loving the miniatures despite thinking the miniatures are incredible in this game uh, if you want more context more information check out my full video but basically that's what it comes down to it'll hold its value it's a safe back feel free to get it at the same time if it's just sitting on yourself doing nothing and not being played holding its value doesn't really matter uh, one more thing i'll cover which is basically they have well two more things i'll cover one is they have the cove expansion which they just recently unlocked so they have this over here the cove a 50 dollars expansion which includes 29 monster miniatures four double-sided room tiles 100 plus cards which is a typical typical fair for kickstarter expansions from these miniature heavy games which means it's not going to be as good a deal as the base pledge especially when you factor in stretch goals and all that but it still does seem to be a pretty decent deal 50 dollars for 29 monster miniatures plus everything else that comes with it it's certainly not a bad deal especially it's like look at these these are some of these are adorable miniatures adorable is probably the wrong word for creepy crawly mermaidies whatever who knows what but these miniatures do look great very true to the theme again i want every single miniature in this box in this game i just not going to get them right now uh, and likely they'll still they'll probably have an all in by the time they're the whole campaign is over so keep your eye peeled for an all-in pledge bundling stuff up giving you an extra $15 discount off of three expansions or something like that but keep an eye on it mythic games is great and also this Thursday, this Saturday, this Saturday, I will have a review going up of Super Fantasy Brawl, which is a Mythic Games that I am loving, absolutely loving it. Spoilers, so no need to watch the review. I love the game. Moving on from there, we do have a giveaway for Darkest Dungeon. I will put it in the links below. This is not my giveaway. This is sponsored by somebody else, but I do link to these from time to time when I see them. So if you want to get a free chance to win Darkest Dungeon, feel free to click on the link that I'll have in the description down below, which will take you to this giveaway. Next up, we have Bios, Mesofana, and Galenus. This is two. These are two games by Sierra Madre Games. One of these is by Phil Eklund and his Bios trilogy, and another one is Galenus by another designer who I apologize, I don't remember your name offhand. And these two games are basically, this is a tough one. The short version of this is I'm dividing my opinion into two different games here because on the one hand, we have Galenus, which, and I may be butchering that name, but we have Galenus over here, which may well be a great game, but I don't think he, we have evidence of the support that this designer has in terms of the people who are going to buy his games. So I'm less confident on Galenus. I think that you might be better off. It's worth noting, both of these are available to play online. So if you're on the fence, feel free to play online or seek out feedback from those who have to see whether they share your taste in games or whatnot. But from these two games, the Patrician Pledge, which will give you Galenus or Gal, I, I'm going to... I don't know the name, but th that that one over there, $64, that seems to be like a lot of money for the game you're getting, and I don't have confidence that there's going to be that aftermarket demand for the game. Doesn't mean there won't, I just have no confidence. It's, it's, it's a lot of money for a game in comparison to what the market normally would charge for a game with those components that size. Now, that same exact statement also applies to Bi Bios Mesofana, in the sense that it's a lot of money for a game. If I'm at $44 for this box, for what you're getting out of it, that is a lot of money for the components in the game, the box that size. The difference between the the two is Phil Eklund's games historically have held their value mostly you're talking about losing once you factor in shipping you're probably talking about losing five or ten dollars in this you're still not it's still not going to be a, a pledge that you will you know hold your value your best bet is waiting for retail on both of these games but on bios mesofani you're talking about paying like an extra five bucks to get it now and get it earlier and all that versus galenus i don't know what that gap is because i don't know what the second hand market is like in terms of holding their value if you sell them neither one of them are likely to get your money back when you sell them again people are gonna have to pay an extra ten dollars in shipping and comparing to get it from miniature market you're likely to talking about losing 10 to 15 dollars on getting these games so not particularly amazing backs but if you want them earlier and especially if you know that you like the bio series from phil eklund that changes the entire conversation next up we have freedom 5 a sentinel comics board game and freedom 5 a sentinel comic board game is a game that i did another this is another one that i did both a review on so i have a review that went up this past weekend feel free to check that out and i had a should you back it that went up last week and feel free to check that out the short version of this is this is a and i'm going to incorporate i guess some aspects of feedback from well, other comments and whatnot. But first of all is, this is expensive for the amount of miniatures you're getting. Now, I talked about this in my Should You Back It, but the miniatures are large. They are very large compared to other miniatures. That may not be rewarding for you. I get that. I totally do. I, 
like more miniatures as opposed to large miniatures most of the time. I, I actually use like a mix of some smalls and some large ones that make them pale in comparison. It's a lot of fun when you have that giant dragon stomping on your little hero or whatnot. Uh, but the miniatures in this game are great. They very much fit into the Freedom 5 Sentinels of the Universe uh, Sentinels of the universe, universe. The meeples in this game are going to be custom shaped and screen printed which is actually a much better improvement over the meeples that I actually played with in my prototype. I like these guys over here on the screen a lot more. The gameplay overall I really enjoyed it. I mentioned in my review some elements I thought were a little fiddlier than more fiddly than I would like but also not as fiddly as Sentinels of the Multiverse or other fiddly games and whatnot. I tend to be I tend to like more streamlined games in general. As of right now, I still want this game. Like, I want all the characters because the stretch goals for this game, the stretch goals are just unlocking stretch goal after stretch goal, tons of stuff over here. So we have, you know, we have funded, we have special cards, ability cards, bystander cards, new art, some villain minis. And this is a big one for me, by the way. I hated the mix of standees and miniatures and meeples. We had like three different systems in the same game. It drove me up the wall. Now we're down to miniatures and little meeples. So that's much better. And the meeples are better meeples. We have a new hero. So we have Unity joining the fight. We have a henchman upgrade. We have a cloth bag. New villain unlocked. We have misinformation unlocked, new mastermind, we have a new scenario, oh these actually looks like we're locked here, new villain, so we're going to get another villain over here, a new hero, which looks like Chrono Rangers is going to be joining the fight, plus a new villain, plus new hero, plus new villain, plus new mastermind, keep going, just keep repeating that while I take a drink over here, new villain, new hero, new mastermind, so we're going to have all that, the game is available to play on Tabletopia, I will say, I know they streamlined it since I played, but my own opinion of playing it on Tabletopia is that it was a significantly worse experience than playing it in person. Or in other words, I'm not saying don't try it out. By all means, try it out, see if it's for you. But my own personal experience was I drastically preferred it in person to playing it on the computer and having to drag things around a screen. So just mentally add the fact that it's probably a worse experience playing it online. Even with the streamlining that they did. Like they added, like everyone had an extra set of dice or stuff like that. But I just would assume that in person is a better experience. So, but overall, Freedom 5 is a game that I liked. They have added a ton of stuff to the game. They are consistently adding more and more stuff. And we have, you know, we have time before this campaign's over. We have 19 days to go. This thing will likely cross 500,000. And that means a lot more villains, meeples, well, not meeples, villains, miniatures, all this fun stuff. And each one with their own special deck. I am actually really excited about all the things this game will bring to the table. And, well, I'm excited. Moving on from Freedom 5. We have Paquetto Collection, three pocket-sized games in one. This is Paquetto. For those who don't know, Paquetto is basically Mint Tin Works. It's the same Mint Tin company, but they're rebranding as Paquetto to be less about the Mint series specifically and more... Actually, I think they had a different name entirely at the time. They had a different name, but they rebranded to Paquetto, like, you know, games in your pocket or whatnot. So it's all small pocket-sized games and all that stuff. Uh, this is going to be for a trilogy of three games, the Blessed Dark, uh, Something Forge, Star Forge, and Castle Siege. Uh, they do mention... So this is the picture you see over here. I do want to mention because... They mentioned it down below, and I'm pretty sure I'm understanding this correctly. I'll just go over it with you so we're on the same page. All images and videos on the page feature prototype versions of the Paquetto product products. Just like the Mint series, the final product will have full color tins and a more polished final look. The reason I'm doubling down on that is speaking for myself and my own two cents, I saw this picture here and I was like, that just looks like an inconsistent, incoherent set of games, which they might all be good, but it doesn't feel like a, a trilogy. Why are you putting them together? It just feels inconsistent. Now, assuming I'm understanding that, that second sentence, the second paragraph correctly, it sounds like they're saying they're going to have a more polished, streamlined look and all be in a mint tin, which means if that's the case, these three that you're seeing here are clearly not the final product. Just worth mentioning because for me, that would be a huge plus. I like the idea of the the Mint series looking more clean than as a set or whatever. As far as the games, these are three basic games. They have a quick overview of each of the games and the way they play. Castle Siege looks like a game where you're playing, like you hold in your hands, very like Palm Island or whatnot. So you hold the cards in your hands between your fingers and respond and attack and all that. Another two are, well, I don't really know enough about them. As far as the games themselves, so the game, the pledge tiers over here, we're going to have $10 will get you a copy of Castle Siege. Uh, $15 will get you a copy of the Blessed Dark or Star Forge. And then for $35, you get the full collection. And then $50 to five dollars you can add on more mint work stuff uh, overall my whole opinion of this one is it's like their previous games like the whole mint series before it this is likely your best option to get it at a totally reasonable price you're going to pay a few bucks in shipping and you might be able to get down the road meaning down the road you might be looking at paying an extra two you might be paying, look you might be looking at paying roughly an extra two dollars per game to get it now meaning the prices are so small that it's hard to accurately predict exactly where they where they will end up in general the mint delivery series has been available down uh, has been available for roughly the same price as the kickstarter after the fact on miniature market or wherever so you're probably talking about losing a few bucks in terms of getting it now but 
like I said, it's a few bucks for a series that if you're interested in it, may as well check it out. It is unlikely to be one that you'll get all your money back if you try selling it just because, again, smaller the smaller a price point for a game, the smaller the price point on a game, the less room there is to pad that shipping when you inevitably have to sell it to someone else, assuming you're dealing with a shipping sale or whatnot. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. And past that, let's move on to Townsfolk Tussle. Townsfolk Tussle is another one that I had a full dedicated video on, and the short version of this is I really, really like this game. I find it thoroughly enjoyable, immensely entertaining, immensely charismatic, I guess is the right word. I don't know. It pulls me in. It's a, it's absolutely hilarious. I love the art. I love the narrative. I love the, the the way the different characters act, the way the different ruffians, the bosses act. I find this whole entire world immensely engaging and fun to play with, with the caveat that I like, because I like more because I focus more on the world that's being sold here than the actual game, the game I enjoyed, but I liked the, the the universe a lot more than the game in a weird way. And because of that, I found that I didn't enjoy it solo. It's not officially a solo game. It has a solo variant. Uh, I liked it significantly more with uh, four players, which is the primary way I played it. I would happily play it with three. I would even enjoy it with two, I imagine, playing two characters each. I think you need at least three characters on the board for it to really have that tactical decision making and maneuvering and all that because there is a lot of push and pull and strategic choices to be made in the way you level up your character the way you pull the, the ruffian around the board and try to manipulate his different cards and where he's going to go and pe keep people in contact uh, they have a lot of updates in terms of just different uh, ruffians that have been locked unlocked different characters that have been unlocked more cards and stuff let me see where we're up to over here if i can find just scrolling through this page after page after stuff here we go stretch goals so they have you know more uh, they have standees which i know is a huge one people ask for they have lots of standees they have the musician pack they have pets they have more pets they have georgie iron gut which is a new uh, townsfolk they have more more cards more cards this the sheer amount of cards they have in this game is absolutely insane they've involved the community in a few cards as well they have a quackalo pet little card so if you like that kind of horn duckling thing they have you know the the screen printed token and coin cloth bags just more and more stuff coming at this point they're currently adding here's that little quackalo mini uh, at this point they're they're still adding art to various townsfolk events meaning we're basically are saying that a lot of the townsfolk events which did not have art in them they are adding art to those events to basically make the game even more immersive and whatnot at 4,000 backers and 283,000 raised they are absolutely killing it I am excited for Panic Rolls first game i'm excited for their future games and i do recommend checking this one out thoroughly enjoy it a lot of fun to play oh and i forgot and yes it'll hold this value i did that in the other video it's almost certainly going to hold this value at 85 dollars for the sheer amount of content you're getting stuffed into a box the fact that this game is kickstarter exclusive i cannot imagine this one will not hold its value now we can move on. Blinks. Okay, Blinks. This is one where I have a giveaway. So for Blinks, I have a giveaway. Basically, they reached out to me and said, hey, can you do a review of the game? And this is not really my thing as much. This is less a typical board game and more a cute little like app almost, uh, but in a physical form. Blinks, if you don't know, is a set of little hexes, which you can see on the screen. A typical set comes with either six or nine, and they're, they're fairly expensive. You're basically buying a piece of technology or six pieces of technology, and each one comes with its own little game in that set. So each one has its game, and then you click click it and activate it and put it together and have them all activate and learn the game so you can play these different games so let me see if i can find an example here there were different examples this one might be was this a racing one i think this was might have been the racing one i don't remember exactly which one they have all these different games but they have like a racing one they have little puzzles you can play they have little like shoving them across the table to bounce into each other they have a host of different games and the idea is that each of these uh, blinks comes with a game that you can then teach the other blinks. So the more blinks you have, the more options you have and the more you can play. Because each blink is designed to have a game that can work with six blinks, because that's the smallest set. But the more you have, it expands further and you can have more of a game going on. So it is a system that will evolve and continuously add new stuff. And because it's almost like a deck of cards, although a very expensive deck of cards, in the sense that it's a deck of cards that people can come up with a game, and then you can play whatever you want with that deck of cards. Blinks is very much the same idea, just being technology-based, which gives you a different set of capabilities that a set of cards gives. Um, I've played them. I find them enjoyable, but I find them very much like a deck of cards, meaning I wouldn't necessarily say, oh my gosh, buy a deck of cards. It's, it's a whole different genre, and I can't talk about the resale value at all because they're expensive and not board games in the way I typically do. That being said, I am more than happy to cover them and bring them to your attention. Not sponsored, by the way, in case you're wondering, but I am giving a giveaway for it. Basically, the company said, hey, we'll do a giveaway for your audience. So if you want, uh, just comment... Uh, I don't know, any comment on this video is eligible to win a set of blinks. So, you know, whatever it is, you'll get a full set of, I don't know, full set. I think you're getting 
a game and the expansion. So I believe you're getting 12 links, but it might just be six. But either way, uh, any comment down below, you'll be entered to a random drawing to get it. I don't know the rules on international. I'm not shipping this one myself, so I don't know. I will follow up with them. If you win internationally, you may have to cover charges. I don't really know. I'll try to include some stuff in the description, but I'm not actually sure because it's not my giveaway. I'm just hosting it for the for the creator. Moving on from there, we have... Oh, that's it. That is basically it. That is everything for today. Uh, Grand Austria Hotel, I am not covering this week. I am covering it next week, primarily because we had 40 minutes already. And, well, next week, like, like I said, is going to be lighter, so we'll save that for next week. And then Nova ADS, I will also cover next week. But this one, I believe I will have a full dedicated video coming probably tomorrow. No guarantees on that. And that is basically everything. We're at roughly 39 minutes and 30 seconds, so close to 40 minutes. So at some point, we'll finally cross that. And that is basically everything. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. If you have any comments, questions, things you want to know, games you want to see, Kickstarters I missed that I should cover, let me know in the comments down below, and plus, you'll be eligible to win a set of links. Until next time, have a good one. So one of the ruffians in this game, over here we got, we got Pepin Milkfrog. So Pepin Milkfrog is a ruffian in the Townsfolk Tussle game. And it reminded me of a joke, which I'll try to say properly. We'll see how it goes out. But basically, a frog walks into a bank carrying a briefcase. And it walks up to the teller, uh, Miss Brown, and says, uh, he walks with the little, the, the little tell and he says, uh, excuse me, Miss Brown, I'd like to take out a loan. And Miss Brown says, um, you're a frog. What do you mean take out a loan? You're, you're a frog. You can't take out a loan. And the frog says, I, un I understand I'm a frog. It's self-evident to me that I'm a frog. But nonetheless, I would, take out, I would like to take out a loan. And Miss Brown, thoroughly befuddled because frogs don't talk, says, uh, I, I guess you can sp go speak to our loan officer, uh, go Miss Black. You can head on over there to the loan officer. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. The frog, not befuddled at all because humans do talk. Walks over to the loan officer, knocks on the door, walks in the office and says, excuse me, Miss Black. And she's like, I'm Patty. She's like, oh, excuse me, Patty. Um, I'd like to take a loan. Patty, slightly less befuddled than Miss Brown, says, um, a loan? What would you possibly need a loan for? And the frog says, well, you see, my friends and I, my brothers, my family, we've been sitting in the swamps for a long time and we'd like to make something of ourselves. And so we said, you know what, what's something we can do? And we said, we're going to start, we're going to open up a hotel in the swamps. And then as the hotel grows, we'll become self-sufficient and we won't have to like catch flies all day long. We could just open up a hotel. And to that end, we, we need a loan. And again, Miss, Miss Black is less befuddled. And she's like, well, I can't possibly lend you money because you're a frog. And the frog patiently says, I understand I'm a frog. I, I recognize this. But rest assured, we have collateral. And Miss Miss Black says, "What do you mean you have collateral? What 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 can you possibly like? What do you have that can possibly be good enough to borrow enough money to buy a hotel? To to buy to borrow enough money to buy a hotel?" And the frog opens up his briefcase finally, and pulls out this shiny, gaudy like trinket of a little like Christmas light situation, some weird thingy, Mister But it's like very sparkly. Does not look like it's worth a lot. It's like this. This heirloom has been in my family for generations. And we will like to use this as collateral for the loan. And Miss Black just is starting to lose her patience here. And she calls over. She's like, one second, I'm going to call over the manager. And she calls over the manager. And she says, um, this frog would like to borrow money for a loan for a hotel. And he wants to give us that, which I don't even know what that is, as collateral. And the manager says, it's a knickknack, Patty Black. Give the frog a loan. <laughs>